Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Momspresso. Um, I hope you all are having a good evening today. So uh, we are living in current times. And as a mother, you know, of a nine year old child, I'm always concerned about my child's healthy growth, immunity being the buzzword these days, thanks to the times you're living in. Now, our kids are learning and absorbing to ensure that, you know, the immunity is strong. We as mothers, you know, are the ones who are concerned all the time, especially when it comes to providing them with optimum nutrition. Like for my, for example, my child is a fussy eater. So many times, you know, I am worried whether she is getting the right amount of nutrition or not. Now, so there's several questions that every mom has on her mind. So to discuss all those everyday health concerns that we moms have, we have with us today a very eminent um, doctor, Dr. Sanjay Vazir, renowned neonatologist and pediatrician at Cloud9 Hospital, Gurgaon. Uh, Dr. Vazir, uh, welcome to Mom's Press. So, and thank you so much for joining us today. Good evening, uh, everyone, and thank you, Vindika, uh, for letting me in and sharing my views on the topic, which I I agree with you. Like you know, all the mothers, like fifty percent of my counseling goes into into reassuring the mothers that they're doing just great. Because most mothers come to me and ask me the same question, and it's, it's like the report cards. Like you know, so I, have I scored well or not? You know, and <laughs> exactly. Every time they keep on asking me questions yes. and you know whatever your child is eating you are always worried about whether that is nutritious enough or not whether they have met their daily nutritional dose or not you know so dr vazir throwing light on these concerns and especially when it comes to growth and immunity because suddenly you know immunity has become the big word uh, due to the covid 19 pandemic that we are living in uh, so every mother wants to know whether my child is getting the right amount of nutrition or not so how does you know how do moms like me make sure that you know they are doing they're including everything in the diet to build immunity of their kids so uh Avantika, I'll, uh, you know i know this some of the questions people would have and i would try to address them at the end of the webinar but uh, yeah. there are some common questions which i come often come across in the opd and mm -hmm. i thought about make a mm -hmm. presentation of the sort and mm -hmm. uh, more common ones and then, of course, like whatever the questions which have, we will try to address at the end of the question. Sure. So I'll be, uh, go and uh, switch to uh, presenting my slides. Am I, you know, visible? Like the slides are visible? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so as uh, Avantika just mentioned, that uh, we are a healthy growth and immunity is something which is a mother's challenge and a dilemma. And every time the mother has the same question, like you know. The, you is my child going fine is enough is enough is how much is enough so these things are, are boggling the minds of the mothers all the time and in the last year when there was a pandemic and still is continuing there was one big question is that can we give something to our children uh which would improve their immunity yeah, uh, yeah. yes like you know to begin with, like, you know, I'll, I found this quote on internet and I thought uh, I liked it quite well. And then I thought I'd share with all my viewers. That was an anonymous quote, say, to my children, if I had to choose between loving you and breathing, I would use the last breath to tell you that I love you. Wow, wow that's, that's amazing. Like, the yeah. mother and the baby bond is something which is like so very, you know, different from rest of the rest of the relationships. You just cannot, you know, there, there's one pivot in the mother's mind, which is the child all the time. And this is like so fascinating because from a mother graduating from being a, a woman to a mother, so much changes suddenly. And that's such a beautiful feeling. I think like sometimes we feel that as men, we are devoid of that feeling to sum up. That's it. <laughs> the mother's concerns are, is like, you know, the most of the comments is that, is my child growing right? And uh, many times it's a comparison between the peers or the school children where, you know, common or in the society where they see other children and uh, sometimes they feel that they're probably not doing enough. And the most question, uh, common question I encounter is that, is the weight of the child appropriate for that particular age? And the million dollar mm -hmm. question they want to answer, uh, they want the answer for is, is there something that I can do better? Always, yes. if they're doing yes. the best, they still want to do it better. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, to get that thing, I'd rather uh, you know bifurcate the growth into four main areas because growth is not only about physical growth. Yes, physical growth, the weight, the height are important attributes of how your muscle is growing, your bone is growing. 
but yeah. there's an important aspect of a brain growth you know and uh, the brain is like you know a child doesn't know uh, to speak but uh, in in an era or so he can speak a language and sometimes more than a language and if we have to learn french today it takes us years and still we're not proficient it so that's the quality of growth which is happening in the brain and of course of course the, we know that the most vulnerable even in the covid times were the were the very small children and the very uh, you know aged ones so mm. the immune tends to wane or is probably lowest at the extremes of the age and you know immune system growth so many times you see some people coming to you and saying mere tonsils bad gaye mere uh, i don't know bad gaye like you know so that's part yeah. of the growth only very rarely or sometimes like uh, you know they become so huge that they obstruct the air flow and then they become problematic but you know be having a tonsils i'd rather have tonsils not than not have it mm-hmm. and then of course the reproductive growth Uh, which happens at the time of puberty, and what you see in this graph is that most of this growth happens in the first few years of life, like you know, first between two to three. After you achieve to twelve to thirteen years of age, most of the growth becomes either static or the growth has virtually happened by this time. And after that, it's only a static phase, and then a decline in the later and then older age group. so the question which you uh, were are uh, asking and most parents ask is that is my child growing normally and that's question which i if you have to answer scientifically <laughs> you know or emotionally emotionally you know most mothers would feel like you know i am doing the best but still my child is the weakest in the class is the shortest in the class you know but uh, and most mothers are worried about the weight part of it and mm. uh, what i uh, recommend and and humans were supposed to grow linearly or height wise like you know being weight is not a human attribute all swift animals mammals for example would be lean whether it is a deer whether it is like you know a horse they did not but they need to grow taller and it's important that after two years if your child is growing 5 to 6 cm per year then that would be universal whether the child at the pre- at the present moment looks short or was tall and both those children should grow at and in fact all the children should at least grow 5 to 6 cm per year till the time mm-hmm. they reach puberty and that's one single parameter some children may be thin looking but it's not bad it's not good to put on fat it's good to put on length so just the criteria for you to be looking at is the height after 2 years of age and if you really want to do more scientific there are so much uh, available on the internet these days and one of the easiest things that you could do is to maintain a growth chart for your child and if you are falling in one of those lines which you see here uh, here the line so if your child is hovering somewhere close to this line throughout mm. whether the height or the weight that gives mm. you a real progress that your child is going fine mm. and if you really are interested in uh, tech savvy you probably can find this answer with various uh, growth calculators which are available on the net give you mm. a growth chart and give you an idea whether your child is going fine or not now when we look at growth and immunity then we look at couple of factors which affect growth and mm. one major factor is genetics and yeah. uh, you know, yeah. for example and the somebody born to a uh, african parents for example would be brought to be tall and broad and mm. compared to chinese people would be broad mm. but they would be short you know so there is a genetic potential and uh, as of we understand we cannot up the genetic potential we can our idea is to reach the optimum genetic potential of that child yeah, uh, yeah. there are there are factors so so, so uh, factors which are like environmental maybe you know pollution for example or pesticides and so many other things that we often talk about yes they are responsible for affecting growth but we largely classify them as non modifiable we know that uh, we tend to have a polluted air in delhi and ncr region yeah. of course when but you know we we would do better if we did not have that bad air but at the mm. same there is that's not under our control but yeah. one factor which is like which actually affects growth and is modifiable and correctable at any point of time is diet and nutrition hmm. Hmm. you know this thing and uh, if you look at uh, this this was hippocrates who was supposed to, who is also called the father of the modern medicine was good to realize it 2000 bc that 
the let food be the medicine and medicine be the food because 80 percent of the things can still be managed with medicine with food only and yeah. uh, and nutrition basically what i'm talking about uh, mm. and uh you know 20, 50 years back or maybe you know a little longer uh, uh, you know uh, when antibiotics was first discovered in 1945 before that there were no antibiotics everything yeah. was you know managed yeah. because was scarce so everything was mm. being managed based on on nutrition alone so that still holds true today also although in the fast uh, paced world we have just lost nutrition as an important component and focused on on you know medicines as part of our well-being when we come to uh, food there are two aspects to food one is macronutrients and the micronutrients so micro mm -hmm. macronutrients are the nutrients which are required in large amounts which are like you know for example cereals legumes mm -hmm. and uh, and they form the bulk or for the energy and the growth but mm. on the other hand, what is important is to look at after the micronutrient uh, um, component. And I tell you in a little while why we are like kind of uh, you know distinguishing between micro and macronutrients and why both of them are important ingredients of our diet. And the micronutrients are phytochemicals; they are antioxidants, they are vitamins, and and they may not be responsible for day-to-day -day energy consumption, but they are important for uh, the Fitness uh, of the body functions. They are important for the growth of the brain, and mm. their most important is in disease prevention and immunity. Mm. So you talk about carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. The common uh, parlance in which the most of the discussion about nutrition happens. Yes, that mm. is important, and uh, that is important for day-to-day -day activities. But what is most important from a disease prevention and mm. The optimum brain development is you know vitamins and minerals which we often tend to ignore uh, as part of a diet because we tend to think okay humne do roti khali, to acha kaam ke liya. but it is not about the quantity of diet it's about the quality yeah. of the quality diet, diverse, of diet mm -hmm. you know which we mm -hmm. tend to you know often and what, one of the biggest uh, things when like you know i started new, reading nutrition in a uh, little depth I realized that, like, you know, whenever I used to talk to anyone and everybody says, Oh, our Indian diet is so healthy. Like, I'm so healthy, but I'm so healthy. 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 i am so people uh, cereal eaters like you know whether it is roti or a rice or some, mm. and the protein content in our diets do tend to be less whether it is vegetarianism or sometimes it is like you know even in vegetarian so one of the other reasons <laughs> we're not like you know and we're very interested in our kind of a diet and yeah. uh, many times we have samosas coming in because that is alu and again uh, rice and tasty snacks are often fried, so they're Fine. not healthy. And the biggest thing which I see in our part of the world is like obsession, especially the North India, the obsession mm -hmm. with milk, because we are born with the concept that like, you know, because Lord Krishna was drinking milk, so I'm missing <laughs> some good yeah. of milk. But, you know, one thing for one to notice is that nutri uh, the God did not make cow for milking and uh, serving the humans. They yeah. made, uh, make milk for her for her calf. So yeah. and and the last which I see is that not enough fruits and vegetables are there in the Indian diet, largely because mm -hmm. we and even if they say we are having vegetables, then like you know, so so they are overcooked, uh, you know, spinach or something, which is by the time you cook it, you know, so mm -hmm. vegetables and fruits are something to be had a raw or steamed or maybe saute a little bit and that's mm. all about it. the way we mm. kick a palak paneer and then we cook mm. overcook palak and by the time you're left with only the fiber and the grass and nothing no minerals and because most of them are heat labile or they are like uh, you know and but boiling them it actually kills the the benefits which are there in the vegetables so an apple is good if it is had in the rough form 
if you cook it and have it, mm. it loses its uh, nutritive value. Mm. And to, you know, to to substantiate my point, I'm just presenting some data which suggests that the nutritional gap one in five children in in the country is wasted, and mm. one in three children, forty percent of them are shorter than the rest of the world. Let's okay. say. And that mm. is this huge burden that we're talking about. And uh, when it comes to burden, you know, it's not only the way we normally say, okay, it's the rural population which is affected. Mm. 20% of urban population with in the higher economic status because of mm. various food fadism or because of being you know a little fussy or one of the other reasons they are tend to have uh, a significant stunting and mm. uh, this is even talking where finances are not a problem so we, we see okay we see commonly our children being stunted largely because we're not eating enough uh, good quality food. Now the question yeah. that you asked uh, was how do I decide what is the right kind of a like you know diet for my child? Mm -hmm. Now for every mm -hmm. every age group there is a, a growth you know chart which is available and freely available on the net and this one mm -hmm. which I'm with you is the Indian Council of Medical Research 2020 uh, guidelines about how much protein and how much carbs and how much mm -hmm. calcium that's given mm -hmm. to the child. Unfortunately, this is like, you know, so one of the ways to do is like to just ask your pediatrician or your uh, you know, um, dietitian to actually make a, a rough uh, sample menu. Mm. So you just selected mm. one seven to ten and uh, nine year child and uh, and make, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, recommendation that and make a food based on that. But unfortunately, sometimes that may not be practical because if you decided that you need to give stuff per anta and by the time a gulab jamun arrives you have had it and you yeah. like have uh, per anta anymore or a dal anymore yeah. because you know they don't even compete for the taste worth say but in easier terms it's for for the parents to realize that uh, for children they should have in every meal that's a concept called my plate where you divide the plate into four quadrants and okay. each quadrant represents fruits vegetables grains and proteins mm -hmm. so, you know mm -hmm. could be of all colors so when we talk of immunity we talk about vitamin a uh, fruits like uh, which are yellow in color maybe potato, it could be sweet potato which could be like you know mango at times and mm -hmm. guava and on the other hand the vitamin C foods which are kiwi, strawberry, amla, you know, orange, uh, citrus fruits. So alternate mm -hmm. day at least you should have one of them as a part or one meal this and one meal the other one. And vegetables again as I said do not overcook them, steam them or stew them and you can have mm -hmm. one size uh, amount of uh, either you want to have a fish, chicken, beans, nuts or anything which you think as is based mm -hmm. on your food preferences and then grains should be only 25 percent and this is so very different because whenever it's lunch time the, the mother always shouts and says ah beta roti khale no so that's change that slogan please yeah. you know it's like yeah. beta put the food with fruits and vegetables and then i'll give you a roti like you know mm -hmm. that's where the chunk of the problem lies we need to be you know, better at our brains as humans rather than, you know, getting mm. fat. And in long term, of course, that's right. And dairy should be only small portion, a portion of this thing. So dude chawal is not great food. Mm. You know, mm. it's like that. as a part of it is fair enough. That's mm. like, so a mm. very small amount that should be like, you know. So now the biggest question again the parents have is like many child the mm -hmm. my child is a picky eater yeah. and this is yeah. one thing which is like you know and mm -hmm. i agree and there's a da data which is from indian journal of contemporary pediatrics yeah. 2018 and they suggested that you know almost 50 to 60 percent of children between three to six years are picky eaters yeah you know and then yeah. the, and many times the parents also come to you so mm -hmm. then is like I'm just highlighting and not going to detail about what are the causes because that's a you know entirely a different seminar or a webinar yeah. in itself. But yeah. uh, if you look at a picky eaters and you compare the two graphs, you see the weight for height. The the gray one is the non-picky one, and the black okay. one is the picky one. 
and mm. uh, you see the weight for her age the percentage as all lesser in the picky ones compared to the the non picky one and what is mm. more important to understand on the right side is that not only it has a physical consequences yeah. but also has the long term you know uh, verbal disability uh, you know learning disability and negative interpersonal relationships behavioral and uh, cognitive functions are also affected in picky eaters if they tend to uh, you know continue for long and uh, and uh, the parents when they come to me and they say you know they are often worried ki mera bachcha khata nahi acha so my only the data suggests that that most of the fussy eaters compared to the non fussy eaters the calorie intake is almost equal the protein intake is almost equal so mm. it is a, you know so hunger is not that that is you can control so it's an inherent part of a human system or any mammal for that matter so you mm. would end up eating that much calories whether you eat it from a biscuit you eat it from a cake you eat it from a milk or you eat it from sugar or you eat it from a good diet you know mm. end up eating the same kind of a calories whether you are fussy eaters or not fussy eaters mm. and you have an underlying disease which is a different fight but mm. fussy eaters tend to have deficiency of couple of things one is fiber mm. because they're not having enough fruits and vegetables and mm. of course, like and more importantly the deficiency of the micronutrients which we just mm. talked about whether it is a b complex vitamins it's an iron it's zinc it's vitamin a all tend to be left because that's in the part of the diet which they are not consuming they are happy to consume a pancake and um, mm-hmm. you know but they are not happy to have uh, as, you know a, an apple for example or a fruit mm-hmm. like uh, some other uh, you know good food so to identify you know it's like they are afraid to 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 touch a new food so many a times you see okay wo yehi khata hai wo doodh aur you know formula of milk hi peeta hai and the child is in fact overweight most of the picky eaters tend to be overweight as i said most of them have higher calories consumption than even the regular ones and okay. uh, the parents uh, you know perception that whenever we force feed them then you know or we feed them they do not enjoy they just tend to run away then we have to sit on the tv with me to like mm-hmm. dance in front of the baby and then they starts eating and uh, then of course many children have a habit of pouching so they keep it in the mouth and and do not like get it at the moment they like they take you know huge time to finish the food so these are some of the factors which will help you identify these mm-hmm. uh, babies from that time now for these babies who are picky eaters and those who are like you know growth is like slow mm-hmm. generally need to see that uh, we we the parents uh, sometimes tend to go for food supplements and mm-hmm. uh, when we talk about food supplements you first need to understand there is a micronutrient deficiency which i said and the consequence mm-hmm. of iron deficiency or zinc deficiency for that matter you know mm-hmm. the incidence is almost 40 to 50% of zinc and iron to the tune of almost uh, 60% deficiency if you know and iron is important from the brain development point of view and zinc is important for for example uh, the uh, reproductive age, growth the brain growth for example and the thymus which is a part of the immune system so zinc okay. is responsible for the immune system also mm-hmm. yeah that you know who has classified that De- uh, india a vitamin a deficiency tends to be very common Uh, okay. in urban areas although rural population it tends to be very very high so the okay. solution most parents look forward to is like you know is either you know going back and mm-hmm. uh, eat fruits and vegetables back and they should of course no denial about that there is nothing nature knows best better than mm-hmm. any or any scientist any body of the world so if you have something which is very natural is completely very good but the resort they tend to do is like to go for a powdered food supplements and then say okay we add something to the milk to yeah. make it make the the child grow better yeah. and the other option is only looking at what is deficient like you know if you have a micronutrient whether mm-hmm. you give it in the form of like you know gummies you give it in the form of something which is palatable the mm-hmm. choice the two is that if you give powder 
like your powder is replete with a lot of sugar. So if your child is anyway on the oversight or is like, you know, is uh, on the growth wise is doing uh, on the 50th percentile or somewhere above, then yeah. adding sugar would actually lead to fat deposition. It may give you nutrients, but it will lead to a fat deposition, which is not a desirable consequence that you need to look at. So mm -hmm. you need to look at it. So as I said, most spiky eaters would be would deplete with calories. So they don't need to add more calories to the milk to get it like more fat. Like, mm -hmm. you know. On the mm -hmm. other hand, focus mainly on what is deficient, which is like the micronutrient, as I said, either on the left side, which you choose the, uh, the right kind of fruits, vegetables, yeah. or if you're not able to give, then go for the other side, which is like only uh, the gummies or, or any other form which the minerals and the vitamins are available. Okay. So thank you so much. I mean, that's like what I wanted to present. And of course, I'd be more than happy after uh, you allow me yeah. the questions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so much, doctor. You know, it was such an insightful uh, presentation. And for me also, you know, as a parent, especially the, the, the parts about my plate and how to divide it equally. I mean, that's something which I think every mom who's watching right now will have something to take from this presentation. For those who joined in, you know, we are discussing on what is the right kind of diet for my child and how to build a child's immunity through nutrition. And now, you know, since we are talking about multivitamin supplements that can help fussy eaters or kids who do not really eat well, um, uh, we Dr. Wazi talked about multivitamin gummies, and I'm sure you know they help us uh, help uh, kids who uh, are picky eaters. So to understand more about that, we have with uh, Sachin Goel, uh, Goel. he's co-founder of Zinga Vita, and he will be talking more about uh, multivitamin uh, gummies. Uh, welcome to Mom's Presso, Sachin, and please tell us more about Zinga Vita and what do these tasty multivitamin gummies offer for our kids? Thanks, uh, Vantika, for having me on this live uh, Facebook webinar. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Dr. Vazir, uh, for taking us through such an informative and uh, you know insightful session. Uh, in fact, I was telling my child's story, bata rahe, to be very honest. So it was too relatable as a parent. Right? Yeah, yeah. But before I yeah. start talking about gummies as a product, uh, you know, I'd like to just take uh, quickly two minutes to basically take your viewers through our brand story, right? Why mm -hmm. basically you know, we came up with a brand called Zingavit, right? So being a parent myself, uh, you know, I totally understand how we feel actually when, when, our, when our children don't eat their, uh, you know, food, nutritious food, their vegetables, mm. their fruits. In fact, you know, just feeding them one glass of water, uh, one glass of milk becomes the entire uh, project for the day, right? For parents. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, as, and, and I'm sure, Avandika, you being a mom yourself, you would really understand this pain, right? Yeah. So my totally. heart goes up to moms, uh, you know, who basically go out of their way. They do so many hacks. To actually feed nutritious food to the children, yeah, right? Totally, totally. But you know, big eaters being big eaters, as uh, clearly explained by Dr. Sanjay Vazir, you know, whatever you do, uh, they have their own reasons to refuse food, right? And unfortunately, my children, we have two children in the family, they also, you know, exhibited strong big eater behavior. And uh, unfortunately, they, Dr. Vazir, they were in the 50 to 60 percent category that you mentioned in your presentation, right? Uh, and we are all different, you know, we have gone through that pain. Uh, you know, me and my wife have gone through that pain. And uh, and you know how it happens in Indian families. The entire conversation actually goes around, uh, you know, discussing this problem with your family, with your friends. And uh, we also did that, to be very honest. Uh, and, you know, during this, one of these conversations with a couple of my friends, who's basically based out of the US, I came to know more about this product called Gummies, right? And, uh, you know, they were very, very positive. A uh, lot of pediatricians really recommend this product uh, in, in global countries like the Europe, the US, right? And uh, the taste was really good. So naturally, you know, I also wanted to try this product for my own kids. And, uh, you know, I got these products. And uh, to be honest, the feedback was really amazing. Our kids really loved them, right? And in fact, we had to actually stop them from, you know, taking more than one gummy a day. It was uh, so tasty. They were they were all uh, crazy about gummies, right? But to be honest, you know, when 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 that stock was over, when I looked the, looked the, looked in the Indian market, to be honest, uh, they were not very well received. Uh, the way it was received, uh, the earlier gummies that we had actually ordered, right? And then I realized, you know, the reason that they were not very well received was basically the taste. 
So anything and everything that works in a child nutrition category is basically taste for children. Mm-hmm. If it is not tasty, it is not going to be accepted by the child, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how you know we thought of creating this brand Zinga Vita, and uh, uh, you know the brand uh, value proposition is deliciously healthy. Anything and everything that we do in terms of products, it has to be extremely delicious, deliciously for the child, and it has to be extremely healthy from the parent's perspective, mm-hmm. right? And Zinga Vita, as you can understand, it's basically Zinga Vita. So get your daily zinc through your daily dosage of vitamins, right? So mm-hmm. that's 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 in brief about uh, Zinga Vita. Mm-hmm. Now let me just uh, actually share some light uh, on this product gummies, right? Okay, so you know for for our viewers because uh, it's actually a very upcoming product uh, in India, unlike global countries where it's it's a very uh, you know uh, familiar product. It's very popular product popular. where a lot of parents give these gummies to their children. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so gummies are basically, you know, it's it's very interesting format of uh, delivering essential nutrients to our children, right? And they come in uh, interesting shapes, like like bear shapes that you you can see on the screen, right? Mm. And uh, they have natural colors and flavors, and it's basically from the parents' perspective, perspective, it's a very very free way of delivering essential nutrients to our ch- children, especially the picky eaters, right? Because they only want something which is very tasty, and uh, so for them, it's it's like a candy. But for parents, they know it's very nutritious, right? Mm. Okay, moving forward. So basically, you know, uh, we have these three products uh, in the gummy space. Uh, starting off with Mighty Vitamins, right? This is specially formulated for uh, picky eater kids. It has eleven essential nutrients uh, like vitamin C, vitamin A, zinc. I think Dr. Sanjay was was talking about zinc deficiency in Indian children, right? Vitamin E, folic acid. Mm-hmm. Which basically helps child uh, for healthy growth, you know, it, it, for better energy balance, for uh, strong bones and enhanced immunity, right? And I, I'd like to inform my viewers here that you know this product is absolutely child safe because uh, we are using natural flavors and colors. It's gluten. Mm-hmm. There are no artificial preservatives being used in the gummy, and uh, it's 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 hundred percent vegan, right? So it's suitable for vegetarian uh, consumers as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. The second product that we have uh, is Sharp Eyes. Uh, okay. You know, sharp eyes. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be very honest, you know, this this is a very customized formulation that we came up, keeping in mind that uh, you know we are living in challenging times. We yeah. are living in yeah. COVID. You know, mm-hmm. children are not uh, going to school. They are uh, undergoing their online classes. Uh, mm-hmm. They are not going out to play. All the entertainment is happening indoors, either on a laptop or on a mobile phones. Right these days. Yeah. So there are a lot of challenges uh, for parents, to be very honest, and uh, you know there is additional stress on their eyes. Yeah. So we came up with this came up with this formulation where uh, we wanted to actually help the children and boost their eye health, right? Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. particular formulation has uh, you know essential vitamins and minerals which actually boost and support eye health, like lutein, zeaxanthin, astaxanthin, mm-hmm. which are proven ingredients uh, to support eye health, right? You know, a lot of lot of, because because I've been hearing the I've been talking to a lot of customers. A lot of uh, customers uh, complain that you know, that their children are not able to s- sleep uh, properly these days, right? And one of the reasons can be eye stress because the strain and stress on their eyes have really gone up in last couple of months because of you know exposure to screens through yeah. their online uh, school through their yeah. you know indoor yeah. indoor entertainment so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Again, uh, the last product that we have is uh, basically which boosts internal immunity. Mm. As again, you know, this, this is also customized, uh, uh, custom formulation for us because again, keeping COVID challenges in mind, you know, yeah, still, yeah. The, the children are actually not going outside to play. They are not, uh, you know, mixing with their friends. They are not going out uh, in fresh air. So basically, their internal immunity is coming down, right? Mm-hmm. So we really wanted to come up with a custom formulation where. Uh, you know these gummies can actually help uh, boost internal immunity of children right mm-hmm. so it has again proven ingredients like elderberry blueberry vitamin c vitamin e and zinc which basically help in building uh, internal immunity for a child right mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. one gummy a day can actually ensure the right dosage of vitamins and minerals which basically impact your internal immunity again mm-hmm. all the gummies are basically you know they are they are gluten free they are allergen yeah. they are mm-hmm. vegetarian 
there are no artificial colors or flavors which are being used uh, mm. no artificial preservatives so we have we have we have actually you know made sure that it is absolutely child safe and there's a perfect balance that we have created between taste and nutrition so you know we we've had actually overwhelming response from uh, parents who say that you know their child is actually loving the taste right and uh, yeah. yeah that's it i think i think that is what we want to create at zingavita you know we want to create products where children have these products themselves you don't have to actually push them to eat something right because we strongly believe that you know keeping your child healthy should be really fun and simple and not yeah. really for parents yeah. as well. Yeah. Right. And, and what more you know can moms ask for for something with the kids eat you know on its own because you have multivitamin sup- uh, syrups and supplements which tend to be very bitter and even though you want to give it to a child they don't have it so i'm so glad there is a brand who is created you know who has created a product like this especially the ones for the eyes you know because um i'll just share an example with you because my daughter has online classes and she wears glasses so every month we see that the number of kids who are you know attending the classes one child has increase you know with the with glasses so every month the child is adding a uh, glasses so that's something really that would solve a uh, solve a problem so thank you so much for that presentation uh, sachin now uh, let's take on some questions i can already see moms you know asking uh, so Absolutely. many questions so uh, i'll uh, pass or like direct the questions to doctor or to sachin depending on the questions uh, that have been asked so the first question uh from avani she has two questions actually uh, so both questions can be uh, taken one is are these good for children who don't like to eat and um, the second question is what shall i give for to my child for strong immunity we have covered that in detail but if we can just uh, summarize it so let me, let, let, so let me uh, you know take both the questions one by one yeah yeah See, so these basically these gummies are uh, not just for big eaters but these are for regular children also because as i told you that we are living in uh, pandemic times right so these gummies are actually like an added assurance for parents yeah. that uh, my child because maybe he's not eating well he's not eating right uh, yeah. you know there might be some deficiencies of micronutrients which are getting built up over a period of time right yeah. so yeah. like an added assurance that even if there is some deficiency through normal diet you are actually mm-hmm. supplementing with gummies and the best part about gummies is that it's very child friendly children mm-hmm. want to have it you know it's it's in fun shapes like like cute teddy bear uh, you know mm-hmm. it's very so for mm. a child it's a candy it's a treat but for mm. parent that you know you are you are giving something very nutritious unlike you know chocolates or candies that they regularly have right mm. so it's a mm. win win situation and uh, you know uh, a perfect balance between taste and nutrition right yeah. that is yeah. and second question is that uh, okay, can you just please repeat your second question what should i give to my child to build immunity because immunity is like the big thing that all mom you know is worried about i think uh, uh dr wazir if you can take that or sachin i mean after you give your views yeah yeah so frankly uh, uh you know we have we have a product which basically uh, takes care of uh, immunity which is basically strong immunity gummies right mm-hmm. and uh, you can start off uh, with strong immunity gummies because they have mm-hmm. proven ingredients which help build internal immunity immunity for children and in terms of you know what food that you should actually give to build mm-hmm. immunity i think dr sanjay wazir can take this question yeah yeah so it's uh, satya was saying you know so you have to decide so one obviously as i just talked to you vitamin a vitamin c and mm-hmm. all kind of, uh, you know vari- variety of foods so different colors so you probably should have a rainbow of colors on your table so to decide mm-hmm. to get because you know there's not one single thing which will give you all the things you probably yeah. Will yeah. apple will buy an mm-hmm. orange for example and you will have vitamin c coming from an orange which is like you would have less so you need to have diversity of diet on a mm-hmm. daily and in case like you know you in the pandemic time for example or uh, you always feel that the child is probably falling sick after going to school more mm-hmm. frequently and mm-hmm. if you're not able to like you know reassure yourself that you're taking enough amount of fruits and vegetables of different types on a daily basis in all the diets then maybe resorting to micro uh, this gummies is a good option in that case Okay. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Uh, so you know, again, you know, uh, Sachin, especially this question is for you because anything that is for kids, the moms have to know whether they are safe or not, or whether they have any side effects. So the question, there are two questions actually: Are these gummies safe for children? And then there is another question which says, do they have any side effects? Okay. 
see uh, as i've already covered in my presentation these uh, gummies are actually very safe for children uh, as i uh, you know mentioned in my presentation once again uh, we are not using any artificial colors or flavors we are not using any artificial preservatives it's gluten free it's uh, you know animal gelatin free for uh, mm. vegan consumers right mm. and they are free of uh, most common allergens right in fact to be honest with you you know i am giving the same very product zingaveda gummies to both my mm. children okay. right in the family okay. so yeah. this is the kind of confidence you know i want to just exhibit for your viewers that this mm. is the same product that we are feeding to our own children in the family right mm. and uh, I, i understand this concern from parents it's a very mm. genuine concern uh, mm. but in the rest assured these gummies are absolutely safe for children Mm. Right. Yeah. So let's just move on to the next question. In fact, Dr. Wazir was talking about in his presentation also that Indians somehow tend to uh, link uh, milk with you know nutrition, and if your child is having more milk, means that the child will grow uh, well. So Ankita is, has this question that you know my son does not drink milk at all. What should I do? <laughs> so if you look at all uh, healthy people from uh, Priyanka Chopra to Virat Kohli to Milan <laughs> Forman to Amitabh Bachchan to like you know they are all vegans. So yeah. you know and, uh, there is a historical part of it and and the uh, other part is historical part or evolutionary part of it is that mm -hmm. you know we think that we were designed to drink milk, but unfortunately if you see the incidence of lactose intolerance is around fifty to seventy percent in mm. in adults. Mm. And as adults we cannot drink a lot of milk. We start bloating. We start having an abdominal pain and another. And milk uh -huh. tends to Deficient in iron. Now we are mm. only obsessed that milk is calcium. It's like because we do not know any other. It's like in an exam we know only one question and mm. answer to that. Question, so we attempt that one only. But <laughs> it is like the moment we know about uh, you know we think about cow we think of milk. We think about mm. baby we think about iron. And we think yeah. about calcium we think of milk. But mm. calcium is there in virtually anything. You just pick up anything from a grocery store and pick mm. up. Calcium in this thing, yeah. from broccoli to every natural food would have a calcium in it. So don't get over bored mm. uh, with with the the calcium part in the milk. And mm. uh, then you would also be uh, surprised to know that it's not the calcium which gets deficient. It's the vitamin mm. D. Because vitamin mm. D is something which helps you absorb calcium from the from the mm. intestine. Mm. So if your calcium is even, uh, you know, if your vitamin D is deficient. However, amount of calcium you give, it will never get absorbed mm. enough for you to be producing that strong bones. So calcium, mm. like, uh, and then when we talk about milk as a source of protein, then mm. there are non-dairy sources of protein as well. In fact, mm. if you, I did not have a graphic right now, but if you see the incidence of heart disease in 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 vegetarian in, in carnivores or I uh, not, I'm sorry, I'm say the the non-vegetarians is. Uh, Of fifty percent in vegetarians, it is forty-five uh, percent, and in mm. vegan, four percent. So it is okay. like you know. So mm. it is so much that we are overtly, and it's a tradition. You look at all the, yeah. uh, you know, mm. you, you see uh, Western societies where cheese is in is in abundance, like for mm. example, uh, mm. societies, or in America where you will have hamburger loaded with double layer of cheese. You know, mm. compared to the Eastern uh, lifestyle, like where Chinese, for example, or Singaporean people, so they are not typically milk drinkers. Yeah, they take yeah. Milk or they take like you know, and they take you know, mm. uh, seafoods largely. Mm. They mm. do not to put on that much weight. So yeah. I mean, it's good to get a get dairy. So somewhere mm. around 50 ml of milk is per day is more than sufficient. But okay. even if you do not take it, don't get mm. bored. Like, you know, you'll have a lot of problems. Yeah. So, like, like doctor said, Angita, you know, wild milk is definitely if your child likes milk, you should give. But there are other sources of all calcium as well that you can try and add to your child's diet. Coming back to questions, lots of questions. Uh, Lots of uh, questions, Sachin. Again, on uh, the safety, and you know, their questions are uh, asked on whether these gummies are gluten free uh, and allergen free. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yes, these gummies are gluten free. These gummies are uh, free of common allergens, right? And in terms of uh, safety, I'd also like to inform your viewers that uh, you know they are basically manufactured in a FSSI approved facility, which is mm. US FDA registered, 
and there are all necessary certifications which are required for a you know safe manufacturing practices right mm -hmm. so i think all your viewers can be absolutely sure that these gummies are pure you know child safe and mm -hmm. uh, you know your children would actually love to have these gummies okay okay so as sachin said these gummies are allergen free gluten free and also safe to have because they have done all the recommended tests and uh, at their end uh, pankila is asking uh, sachin what is the right amount in which a child should consume uh, gummies in a day okay so uh, uh, for mighty vitamins uh, this is basically one gummy a day right mm. for sharp eyes it's two gummies a day mm. and for uh, strong immunity again it's one gummy a day let me also go ahead and inform that uh, mighty vitamins is basically for anybody who's 3 years and above right mm -hmm. and for sharp eye and strong immunity it is basically for people for children who are 5 years and above and uh, i would strongly recommend that since it's not a candy it's mm -hmm. actually gummy just mm -hmm. you know infused with vitamins and minerals please mm -hmm. stick to the you know uh, recommended dosage which mm -hmm. is like one gummy a day for mighty vitamins and mm -hmm. uh, is a day for sharp eye so on and yeah. so forth yeah and we have we have actually we have actually you know uh, put all this information on the label so that there is absolutely no doubt uh, in the mm. parents mind and they don't go wrong uh, with the dosage hmm in fact you know talking about the right age to have supplements and you know gummies you know i would really want dr wazir to throw some light on this topic because moms are very worried you know there is there is a question on what is the right age when my child should start uh, gummies so uh, if you could talk about that doctor generally as i said uh, there at uh, the eating behavior tends to go haywire generally and the second or third years of life and three years on, onwards and uh, less than like at least two years there is a risk of choking so you know you would probably not uh, you know risk children less than at least three years uh, you know to my mind i mean of course uh, sachin may have a different view but like you know at least three years and above is where we should probably focus on giving uh, gummies as a source of uh, nutrition to, to most of these Mm -hmm. no, okay, absolutely, I agree with the, absolutely agree with Dr. Wazir because we also recommend that it should be started uh, beyond three years because then there's a because it's it has to be chewed right then there is mm -hmm. an issue of choking if if mm -hmm. you are starting with too young of a of a mm -hmm. child yeah. mm -hmm. so it should be started at least with three years yeah yeah. Yeah, and again, like doctor said, you know, and everybody is talking about it. Uh, food, natural food, natural uh, ingredients is something that can help and can go a long way in building uh, healthy uh, kids and you know also their immunity. Um, let's let's just look at some last questions again. Such a lots of questions on safety, allergen free, and all that. And there are there is in fact a question that talks: Can even adults take these uh, gummies or not? So, uh, as you answer this question, let's also summarize for our viewers who've joined now. What are the um, uh, are they safe to be taken or not? And what are the ways, different ways that uh, different variants that you have? Right. So uh, you know these gummies can be taken by children, by adults, anybody who's uh, more than three years of age for mighty vitamins, and for strong immunity and sharp eye, who's more than five years in the bar, right? So adults, so just to answer your question, adults can take these gummies, right? Mm. In fact, I do take these gummies on daily basis, okay. right? Yeah. So that's first part of the question. And again, I understand the concern from parents because. A lot of questions are coming on uh, safety aspect. I again like to inform your uh, viewers that they are absolutely safe for anybody, including children, adults, mm. because we have not used any artificial ingredients. We have mm. all the certifications which are required for a safe manufacturing practice. Mm. And uh, being a very responsible parent who is actually giving this product to my own children, mm. I would want to be come up with only those products which we can give to our own children before we ask people to you know give, mm. give these. to their own children so they are absolutely safe okay okay one last question to dr vizir and then i can see the same questions uh, you can ask questions again and we'll try to answer them later on after this webinar is over also those who are watching right now uh, kriti is asking doctor can these gummies be given to kids who are hyper or who have adhd perhaps you know she has she speaking from personal experience uh see from a point of view adhd and uh, you know hyperactivity the it depends on the physician the some of the physicians like uh, suggest that sugar laden things uh, should not be given sweet things should not be given to children with adhd and because that tends to cause more hyperactivity but uh, i am not too sure like about the content it does not contain in sugar it do or does it contain such a 
So, Dr. Azeev, this contains very less amount of sugar. So, it has almost only 1.5 gram of sugar, right? Mm. One. So, technically, yes, you can give it, like, you know, but, you know, unless you are on a, on some kind of a ketogenic diet for, for uh, you know, various neurological issues, where any amount of sugar is uh, not recommended. But if mm. you are dealing with the ADHD and beha hyperactivity behavior issues, uh, you know, you can talk to the doctor, but most of the time, as far as the scientific literature is concerned, there is no direct association between diet and ADHD as such. But yes, mm -hmm. I know where you are coming from, some of the doctors and some of the colleagues do recommend that sugar should not be part of it because it tends to cause. This is mm -hmm. largely belief uh, made out of experience rather than evidence, but I'm sure you need yeah. to believe it after that. Yeah, thank you, thank you, doctor, for that answer. And for those who are watching, you know, of course, if you if your child has any special, you know, medical issue or anything, you should be taking anything only after your doctor advises. But like we had a discussion here, these uh, gummies are safe for kids, you know, normal growing kids and kids who are fussy eaters, particularly with no other, uh, um, you know, uh, added health issue. Uh, thank you, doctor Sanjay Vazir and doctor and Sachin for joining us today. And for those who joined us, I hope I have taken all the questions. There were lots of questions which kept on coming around immunity and on the safety of the product which we have tried to take up so if i have missed your questions apologies for the same but you can watch this video again thank you doctor for joining us and thank you Sachin. thank you so much Avantika, for having me thank you Avantika. thank you so much yeah, so thank, you. thank you doctor